to Enlightenment of Change on webtalkradio.com. I'm your host, Connie Whitman. As always, I'm excited that you're joining us this week. So of course, as you listen to the show, I truly hope that you feel my passion that I get it, man. Change is hard and it could be a little scary, especially if the change is thrown at us and it's not something we've chosen. So to help you on your journey of change and what, again, whatever that is for you, where you are in life and business, you go to, um, in the show notes, I have a link to my communication style assessment. It really is a brilliant tool to help you understand how your messages through communication are being let leveraged or being heard by the person that you're speaking with. You'll get two reports. One, your natural superpowers of how you show up. Second, your blind spot, which are those that are probably 180 degrees different than how you communicate. So again, that probably might be the more important report for you to, uh, to read. So again, that link is in the show notes, my gift to you. And I truly hope, hope it helps you on your journey of change. Now, my motivational quote today is by Lily Walters. And she says, the success of your presentation will be judged not by the knowledge you send, but by what the listeners receive. Now, I remember the first time that I was asked to speak in front of, it had to be about 100 people, I fell flat on my face, right? It was awful. I feared that I had accepted this regional sales manager position where I needed to speak every month at these regional meetings. And I was supposed to inspire people, right? To build those deeper client relationships. And of course, at the end, grow more sales, which I love. So what did I do after that major failure? I cried all the way home, no joke, fearing that I was inevitably going to fail the following week where I had to do another presentation. So you can imagine that that was one tough week, really, really tough week, building up to that second presentation. I nervously got back on the horse the following week. And again, I prepared like a lunatic, crazy person. But at the end of that second event, I actually received a standing ovation. So truthfully, I wanted to burst into tears at the end while they were standing applauding me. I was just thankful that I had finished the presentation without throwing up. So here's the deal. Everyone is a public speaker, whether you realize it is or not. As soon as you open your mouth and start to speak, it's public. Speaking's a brilliant way to reach out to a bigger audience, to build your brand, and to get known um, by your ideal clients. So reality check. Most people avoid because of fear, and it shows up in our lives, probably through procrastination and self-doubt. Well, guess what? You're in store for a treat today. We, I know I can use help in this realm as well. So my guest is Eva Karen Wallen. Eva Karen is the creator of The Expansion Method, author of The Power, Powerless Thought, and she's also, of course, a professional speaker. She's known internationally as the queen of transformation because she helps her audience and clients release what is holding them back and rewire their minds so they can easily step up their step up their game and grow their business. She's been featured in a leading expert on international platforms, including U.S., UK, Australia, Sweden, and Germany. Eva Karen has uh, been seen in Escala Magazine and the Wealth Academy and shared the stage with Marisa Murgatroyd, who I was a student of. Please help me welcome Eva Karen to the road. So thank you so much for being on and really taking the time to share scary, right? Public speaking, scary. Yeah. And thank you so much for having me and letting me share this message because it's really dear to my heart. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I can really feel the story you told me about, you know, doing this presentation and feel it was awkward. My God, I have been there many times. <laughs> so the thing was, when I started out as a coach, I, I heard other coaches speak about, well, I do a speaking gig and I always get clients. And I wanted that too. So I said yes to opportunities, but that never happened to me. And I was really doing my best. But the thing was, I wasn't myself because I was so nervous. So I had to sort of, you know, up everything I had to be there. But I was so focused on me. So I wasn't connecting with the audience. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what happened the first time. I had never public spoken before that right event. And I was so nervous, I think, going in that, you know, you stutter, uh, uh, you know, all the tick words come out. 
but I wasn't connecting with them. It was, it was an epic fail. So I totally get it. And I think the next time, obviously I was prepared with my content, but I was joking more. So I think uh-huh. I was able to connect with the, with the people, you know, the, the employees that I was to, to inspire. So I totally get that piece of it. At the end of the day of a Karen, really, really, what is the problem that you solve for businesses, for people? Because public speaking isn't just for business owners, right? This is for everybody. Um, that's a, in my opinion, that's a professional, right? So really, really, what is the problem you solve for us? So it goes actually beyond fear, but fear is sort of the leading part that shows that something else is going on within. Mm. So why, I mean, logically, we know that being on stage, you know, talking to a group of people could be standing up at a network meeting, presenting yourself. It's not nothing dangerous. No one's going to kill us or, you know, and still the body, (laughs) hopefully, well, it hasn't happened yet. (laughs) But the body responds in a different way. So there is there's a deeper thing. And the the fear is, you know, the symptom on, on the top layer. And if we follow the fear down to the subconscious mind, because that's where I go when I help people, there's ideas we have about ourselves. And it's it's the most common ones are I'm not good enough. Who would like to listen to me what do I have to say I mean there's so many other people that are more experienced than me so it's stuff like that that is you know behind the surface for most people but also from previous events because look at the three-year-old a healthy three-year-old they're not afraid to speak they just (laughs) and then fast forward like 20 years or so or maybe not even that far in school, maybe you're not behaving the same way. So what happened during those years? Well, we get programmed. We we learn from the environment we're in. And there's so many things happening, teaching us that we're not good enough the way we are. Yeah, absolutely. But it could also be other traumas. I mean, but that is not for everyone. Yeah. It's funny. I remember my older son, he's now 26 and he was in first grade and I loved the teacher. She would make them CEO for the day and they would bring in, it was show and tell, right? But they, she would have a seat up in the front. Everyone would sit, all the kids would sit on the floor. She gave them a microphone and they had to wait for everyone to settle down as if it was a board meeting and they would get you know show my my son brought his hockey because my kids played hockey brought his hockey helmet and he talked about hockey and being in net and being a goalie and you know and then at the end he was like a five minute eight minute whatever the time limit was and then they opened it to the floor and the kids could ask questions and I was I was always in the classroom helping the teachers because I just wanted my kids to know education was important so I was very active in the school I got to go because they invite the parents in you know and stand in the back and observe and I said to the teacher Mrs. McDonald was her name and I said this is a brilliant skill as a business owner watching this you're teaching them public speaking there was no fear they were confident you know they waited for everybody to settle down and like they really controlled the room they were in first Mm. grade so why doesn't our school systems continue with show and tell but set that container of safe because everybody gets up and do it but have a little fun with it be able to answer those questions think about the um, critical thinking skills that are needed to do that Uh, brilliant Mm -hmm. just brilliant so these are the kinds of things that we're not taught to do when we're kids, unfortunately. And then we grow up saying, no, 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 that was wrong. You know, in school, a teacher tells you your answer was wrong. I'm not opening my mouth anymore. Right. That's simple. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Who would you say are the people that are attracted to you the most that you really get in there and truly help? Because as people are listening, you say something and they think, oh my goodness, she's talking to me. So who do you really, really help? And, and how? how, how do you do that? Yeah, so I work mostly with business owners mm-hmm. because they are oftentimes in a situation where they have to speak. I mean, um, it could be that they want to be on stage to get clients, but it could also be that they are in a board meeting, you know, having a group of important people 
that they have to show something for, or maybe they're a salesperson that have standing in front of a group of people and they want to show their best so they can sell. So it's it doesn't really matter who it is, but that is most of the people I work with. Professionals, yeah, which, yeah. which makes sense because executives still have to go in front of the CEO and the board and justify a budget or whatever. And I know, you know, my corporate clients, it's always before the budget. They're like, oh, I have to go defend my budget. And it's never like, woo, I am excited to talk to the board. I never get that reaction. It's right. You know what I'm saying, Ever Karen? It's like that dooming yeah. boom, like, oh, I just can't wait till it's over. Um, which is unfortunate because if we went in and, and I'm going to use the word confident, but I don't mean confident where you should listen to me because I know everything and I'm great. That's not what I mean. It's not by about confident. that. Right. It's that confidence of, I think I can help this situation. And here's my solution, whether it's a budget, uh, an example for a sales program, in my case, whatever it is, you go in confident because you know you have the right answers. Does that make sense? Yeah. It, yeah, and the confidence of being yourself. The thing is, I am the way I am, who I am today, and not trying to pretend to be any different than who I am. So can you imagine just be the same way, like when you are with your family, friends, in a board meeting or in a sales meeting or standing on stage for 100 people, you know, being grounded in you. And I saw this once, it, it's a long time ago, but I was at a conference and there were three different men talking and they were totally different people. One had recently been uh, without a job for several years, but now he was in this uh, work environment. And another person, he, he was a vice president of Toyota in Sweden. And then the third man, I, I don't remember who he was, but three totally different men. But they were really, everyone loved to listen to them. So I always thought of thinking, hmm, what is the common, de de how do you say? Do Denominator. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you. what's the common? common <laughs> it sounded good in here. <laughs> yeah. Did it could just take, come out the mouth, right? You're adorable. <laughs> yes, the common denominator. So, so and the, the one thing that, uh, came to me was that they were all authentic they were themselves and that really you know it was so beautiful to see that and then after that I see that there's nothing more beautiful than a person that is authentic and themselves you don't have to pretend you don't have to put on a persona you being you and it's interesting. I have a new client and um, so I'm doing training is about 150 employees. And so they're in different groups and it's, it's live. Uh, the first round is live. We're doing a hybrid, some virtual, some live. Anyway, the, I, when I started class, I always do a little icebreaker and I ask them what character do they resonate with? It could be from a movie, a book, you know, a TV show from a customer service perspective, when they, when they're in front of their client, what's the character they feel. So I'm the energizer buddy and bunny, everybody, right. You're so surprised. I know. So I'm the energizer bunny, but so anyway, did this, do I do this all the time. And this one young lady um, happened to just be the last one to go. And she picked whatever the characters. And I ask them why they, why they connect or resonate with that specific character and whatever she added, it was very personal, very vulnerable. And I could feel that it took a lot for her to share and be vulnerable with, in this case, the other 14 or 15 people in the room. And I paused and I don't know why I have a Karen. I just said, I said, can I give you a hug? And she goes, I would love that. And I gave her a really nice hug. Well, fast forward again, I didn't, I didn't want to embarrass her. I just felt, and I thanked her. I said, thank you for being vulnerable and feeling safe with us. That's important in a classroom. Otherwise you're never going to open up and share what you need to learn. Fast forward, one of the other women, my peer, this was a younger girl. She came up to me after the training. She says, when you stopped and hugged her, she goes, it was the most beautiful thing. Now I'm in a corporate environment. And I said, I, I, I said, you know, I, I almost hesitated because I'm like, I'm in a corporate environment. But Eva Karen, for me, I needed to hug her. It was the feeling I got. It was in the moment. That's me, though. That's an example of being authentic and real and not stopping myself because I was in a corporate environment. Everybody in that room was touched 
by her authenticity and vulnerability, and then my receptivity to that to create, they all felt very safe. You, you don't yeah. do that by accident. And that now here's the other thing, Eva Karen, right? That wasn't, oh, let me make everybody feel safe and do this. It was just an authentic gesture that was in that moment was the right thing to do. That's what we're talking about, right? Exactly. You could receive her and you could follow what you felt in this moment because you could not put that on autopilot and hug every person. No. <laughs> it wouldn't be authentic. That's right. That's right. So I, I like that. I think that word authenticity is overused lately. That to me is a really good example of, I was just me. I wasn't, what is the environment I'm in, right? Because the environment you're in doesn't change who you are. Obviously I'm not going to, you know, be a total goofball in a corporate environment, maybe like the way I am with my family, but by the way, I'm a goofball even with my corporate <laughs> clients, like, because humor is a good thing. I don't overdo uh -huh. it. I don't over, but you gotta be, you gotta do you, you know, we say that, but I don't think we always okay. know what that means. Now I know you talk about being fearless when speaking in front of an audience. So can uh -huh. you give examples or success stories where someone truly was stepped into their greatness by just being fearless? Well, the first one I would like to talk about is me, actually, because <laughs> it's always a good, we good. We, it's good we put ourselves in the petri dish, right? Yeah. Well, the thing was that um, I I had for a couple of years wanted to to challenge myself by taking a stand up comedian uh, class. So, and finally, me and my husband did it. Um, we had this thing that we were going to do some things together that no one had done before, no one of us. So we took this uh, class and we were supposed to invite friends and family to have, you know, to, to show at the end of the class. We were five people in the class. No one had invited anyone. And I thought, I don't wanna, I just wanna take the class and that's it. And then it was a two day thing. And by the end of the first day, the teacher, she said that, well, I'm uh, in, charge of this comedy club and we're going to have a show on, on Sunday evening and anyone uh, if you want to come and do your gig there you're welcome and to my surprise I did this I want to <laughs> and I said what is going on and I know I can be excited about things in the moment and then regret it but actually when I was stepped down on, on stage I just felt this is joyful and um, I also said to the teacher because she said that, well, it's just you and the mic. And it's, you know, it's vulnerable to be on stage. It's scary. And I actually said to her, please don't say that because you are seeding that into us. Oh. So, so after when I stepped out of stage, I thought this was fun. I would love to do it again. And then I remembered my journey the first time. I took a speaking class. I was so nervous. I could hardly speak. I mm. was sweating. I, my, I mean, people could hardly hear what I said. And you know what I was supposed to say? My name and my occupation. <laughs> that was <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, I was so nervous. So I can't even imagine why I signed up for it, but I did. So then I saw my journey. And from there to staying on a comedy stage you know feeling good about it and I realized I could see what I've done and when I've been searching and looking for what are other people doing how they help people to become fearless of public speaking it's a superficial thing that well practice 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 yeah. and yes I mean the more you practice the better you will become that's for sure but like now I have a client who just started a, a group uh, two days ago and I met him at the B&I meeting and he said he used to have panic before speaking and and then this funny thing comes and I've spoken to many people that say well yeah I used to be super nervous now I can handle it whatever that means so Imagine having this strong emotion and you have to overcome yourself over and over again. Yeah. It's really tough. It's really hard work. And 
some yeah come to the point where they say they can handle it but they still have something to come to overcome yeah yeah anxiety anxiety exactly but by going further down into the subconscious mind and see what is actually going on because I felt when I had the talk uh, you reminded me of I really got bad feedback uh, from it and I felt useless I felt like um, I'm not good at this I'm not going to do that again so it took me quite some time before I said yes to another speaking engagement sure. because I knew I was bad at it because it it triggered you know limiting beliefs I had within me from before that's the thing so in my group coaching programs I in a safe container would bring that up so they can be released and something else I want to say about fears it's my favorite subject and ex except being funny but <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is that people want to get rid of fears they want to get rid of the heavy emotions they have and that doesn't work you have to allow them to be allow them to give you the message that they are having to you to contain um, because then they want to be released from you but if you want to get rid of them they're going to stay because they need your attention but you can accept them uh, then you can allow them to process through you yes. and then they will leave you totally yes. different it's effortless yeah you don't have to fight them anymore and the thing is when you fight an emotion you're actually fighting yourself which is stupid it's silly yeah and uh, you know it's true that I think we think that and and you're more experienced with this than I am but when I think we think that if I work harder, I push it down, I suck it up, pull your big, big girl pants or big boy pants up and just do it right. Get through it. You're doing it, but how good number one, right? Wow. How effective is it? So what a waste of energy and time if you're not delivering at your best because you're putting, pushing down the fear. And you said before, I, I just want to circle back that being prepared, yes, it makes it a little bit easier. You should be, if you're talking or speaking at an event, or you should be the expert at what you're opening your mouth about. Otherwise don't, well, here, let me rephrase that. If you're trying something new, I would say, if, and you're in a networking event of people, you know, perhaps I would say, Hey, listen, I'm trying to, I'm trying this message out. It's a new message. I'm mm -hmm. trying to approach it differently. I have a new value statement, whatever. I think you should try that out, but let people know how's it landing for you. Like I would do it mm -hmm. from a learning experience, not, Hey, this is who I am so that you exactly. can use it as a learning experience. You see what I'm saying? Versus let me try this new material out. Let people know that you're trying something out because then number one, they think, wow, you're vulnerable with me. Number two, you trust me. So you're building this trust by asking them for that honest feedback that you're willing to accept, right? Not get defensive over, but you're asking somebody for their help. I think that's pretty powerful. I don't know. What do, what do you think about that kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, I want to add a number three. You're authentic doing that in right? that way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's fearless, but isn't that fearless to say- it is. I'm not perfect, right? Can you help me out here? Exactly. I mean, you also allow other people to be that as well, to be more people, you know, the person that you are. And I want to circle back on you talking about being in a corporate environment. It's people. <laughs> yeah, we work with humans. Yeah. So to, um, I, I'm not in that environment usually, but it's it's funny when I see people complain on LinkedIn because that's more professional. Uh, people sharing about you know a personal story or something. Well, I thought LinkedIn should be more professional. What the heck is professional? I mean, if you're human and I mean ethical and and those kind of things. Fine, you. What else is needed? It, for me, it sounds like you have to be a certain way, and then you're taking a piece of you away. Yeah. And, and we're one person, you know, I, I tell people when you're with your client, when you're with your family, it should be you. But when you're with your client, 
hopefully you're talking about a solution to help whatever their problem is, situation, whatever's going on, right? Depending on if you're a massage person, if you're a financial person, right? Your zone of genius is that hopefully the person in front of you, but you got to be you, you got to do you. And I remember, oh my gosh, of the Karen, when I first started my career, uh, it was selling insurance. And so literally we would sit at the person's kitchen table and oftentimes I was single at the time when I started. So I didn't have kids or anything. Well, I love kids. So when they would have, you know, they go, go play. I go, no, no, come here, come here. Draw me a picture. And I go, you want to sit on my lap? Because I could still talk to the mom and dad. I know what I wanted to talk about, right? But instead of excluding the kids, and then they're still underfoot. Kids are kids, right? You're they Italian. Them. You're Italian, right? Right. So I brought them into the <laughs> so fold. A- Say that again. Well, you're Italian. That's how they do. <laughs> that's how I do. I love kids. So I just had a, a brand new great nephew was born um, two days ago. So I'm very excited about that. I can't wait oh, to meet him, so Cameron. Sweet. I know I can't wait to meet him. But so, but see how I was me. See, again, I was in my twenties. I didn't know any of the stuff we're talking about. It felt right to not exclude the children. And you know, it was yeah. funny. They sat quietly and diligently and they drew me pictures. And then I would tell them, I'm going to put it on my refrigerator at home. And they were so excited and it allowed yeah. the mom and dad to have a real conversation with me. So, but see, again, I was me, I was building trust. That was me at the core. And I think we forget that we try to put on a persona, a professional mm-hmm. persona versus being self. And you did something else that's so important. You saw them and you were present with them. Everyone wants to be treated that way. Sure, sure. What Do you see any myths? I'm going to use the word myths. Like, can you bust any myths for us? Like, well, isn't it, right? Like, isn't this reality? Like, do you see any myths out there that are nonsense? I have one favorite one. And it's like, uh, this is something I heard many, many years ago before I even started to work with this. It's like, yeah. Well, yeah, of course I'm nervous before getting up on stage. Um, but that's, I think that's a good thing because it shows that I'm serious. I want to deliver the best. And me getting up on stage on that comedy club, I also want to do my best. Yeah. But I don't have to be nervous before that. I even spoke to professionals that say, I'm so nervous before I'm speaking, so I want to throw up. And they they don't want to they don't want it to go away. It it. I mean, if you're nervous, your your ability to think is less than if you're calm. That's right. So why would you like to be nervous in front of it? And I often hear that. Well, uh, well I think everyone is nervous before they're going to speak like an excuse that that is the norm and that is how it should be well it's your choice but i don't believe in that absolutely i think you could really be yourself and when you own yourself and of course when you're prepared to what are you going to say you can absolutely deliver to the highest quality and being calm confident and it's a lot easier i believe to connect with the audience be present with the audience, as we said, you see them, connect with them. So they feel that you are there for them. When we talk about preparation, I was told once, and I thought this was brilliant because it's happened to me. <laughs> you know, you're on stage, whatever that is, or doing a presentation and the tech goes out, there's no PowerPoint. Show must go on. So if whether you have a PowerPoint or not, you can still deliver your presentation intact that means you're prepared. And so Mm -hmm. like it it happened a few weeks ago to me, the tech, something went, it just boop gone. And I looked and I said, okay, guys, well, we're going to keep going. I said, I I apologize that you don't have a visual, but refer to your workbook. I'll I'll tell you what page we're on. And I continued as if nothing changed because it didn't matter because I knew what I wanted to deliver. And of of course, you know, they had their workbooks and what, what have you, but even if they didn't, you have to continue. You shouldn't need your slides to tell you or prompt you what's, if you do, you're not prepared enough. See, to me, that's that you have control over versus, and then you should show up a little bit less um, nervous. We're out of time, but I have one more question. Is there one thing that 
the, everybody listening, if they have a presentation this week, <laughs> what is one thing they could start to play with or practice with to kind of calm those nerves, the fear, all of that? What's one little tip? Well, <clears throat> something um, that we've been touching on today is laughter. So if they have some some memes they like or some you know bad jokes or something like that to tune into just before because when you laugh you relax. That's true. <laughs> so, so giggle. Yeah, talk to somebody who's going to make you laugh before you go on stage or before you do the big presentation to the board of directors, right? Mm -hmm. um, you got it. Yeah, you, you, I, it's it's true because when you're laughing, you're relaxed. And I think you send off positive endorphins versus that fear where our brain kind of, it slows down, right? Because it's that fight, fight or flight is what's kicking in literally, right? That reptilian brain yeah. is going, run! <laughs> I have one one more tip. Yeah. And um, yeah. Uh, which is a totally different thing, but yeah. you can do both. So imagine, and if you if you can be on the stage before the audience enters, even better, but you can do this backstage as well. So just relax and, and sort of connect and center yourself mm. into your heart. Mm. And then you send out love to every person in the audience. Just connect with them sort of tele telepathically i love it because then you have already connected with the person in the audience yeah and they have felt you and your energy before you get up on stage yeah whether they know it or not yeah we're energetic beings absolutely i agree i agree with that 100 percent. another thing i tell people is do the power poses so when you do a power pose your cortisol it forces your cortisol level to go on which is the nerves and it increases your testosterone this is scientifically proven and a power pose is like the wonder woman pose right hands on the hips feet grounded and you look straight ahead, not looking really at anything. And you do it for, you know, a minute, go in the ladies room or men's room. Don't do this in, on the stage. You look like a weirdo, but go into the bathroom <laughs> or the ladies room, men's room, do it and then go back out. And you'll see that you feel more in control. Your heart rate is in control. And again, your cortisol level has gone down. You, you're, what you're doing with those power poses is you're controlling the fight or flight. And it just allows you to step on whatever, again, in front of the board or on a stage but you step in and you're ready to go because you kind of uh, did all a little bit of, of energy pre-work before getting on the stage. And I do love the idea of sending that love, just everyone out there receive me with love and grace, right? And ease. And I hope whoever needs to hear my message that it resonates with you. That's all we can yeah. do. It's the only control we have. All right, everyone. So you, it's time. I'm going to give you uh, Eva Karen's information. So if you have an email, you email her if you have a specific question at Eva Karen at Eva, Eva Karen Wallen .com. I will put that in the show notes website, Eva Karen Wallen .com. And you do have a free gift that I will put the sh in the show notes. Can you tell everybody what that is, Eva Karen, please? Mm -hmm. Something that's going to save you lots and lots of time. You can imagine. Mm -hmm. Because it's a simple way, it's a guide and a simple way how to, to memorize your talk. It could be five minutes or an hour, it doesn't matter. The length, it could be the whole day. But how you can memorize your talk in a very short and simple way. It's beautiful. Again, these little tools, here's the thing. Here's a template or a tool to help you build your, your level of confidence, fearless, to become fearless. That's what we're talking about, right? Not, again, controlling the cortisol and all that stuff. So use that. The link will be in the show notes. Um, it's like anything else, though. You got to use it. You got to practice it. Otherwise, nothing's going to change. You know, there, you know, Eva Karen, right? There's no quick fixes. We have these tools, but then you have to empower yourself to use those tools, refine those tools, and then they become part of kind of our DNA. That's when we could step on that stage without doing all this pre-work per, per se, because you're prepared, right? You, you've done a lot mm -hmm. of other preparation with the subconscious work that we were talking about today. Thank you so much yeah. for being on. This is this is such an important topic because it's not just when you get on stage, right, in front of a thousand people. It's when you get in front of your team. It's when you get in front of the board of directors. It's when you have to justify your budget. It's when you get in front of a client. All these skills transferable, no matter who we're speaking with. 
Yeah. And the thing is, when you use the fear of being on stage, for instance, and we go down into your subconscious mind, there is a programming there, limiting belief, whatever it is. When that becomes released, it's going to have an effect on other parts of your life as well, because it's not just showing up in one area, it's showing up in different areas. Maybe you're yeah. afraid of speaking up to specific people. Yeah. Maybe you're holding yourself back in other situations. It all comes down to the programming. And by following the fear, we reach it and release it. And then you're going to be more free in all kinds of areas in your life. Yeah, it, it, the ripple effect. When you get mm -hmm. really good at a skill, it's transferable and it ripples into other areas of our life, whether we realize it or not. I love that. Thank you for adding that piece um, at the end. Thanks again to the Karen for being on and, and giving us your time. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Well, thank thank you. you so much for having me. Oh, I love spending time with you. And you. I hope you will join me weekly as we question, build and discover together, no matter where you are, are on your journey of change. I truly hope my guests and I, we provide a story, a tip, an idea, something that lands for you to think, oh, this is what I've been looking for. You know, I say this every week, Eva Karen, they're all, they're all sick of me saying it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Information is a beautiful thing. If you do nothing with it, it's simply information. Once we start applying it and putting it into action in our life, magic starts happening truly. And that is what I wish for all of you. Um, thank you for tuning in to Enlightenment of Change with me, your host, Connie Whitman on webtalkradio.com. I truly hope you have an inspired week filled with let's say a strategy to approach the change that you're facing. And again, I hope Eva Karen or myself have shared something that helps you make that change or that next step possible and hopefully easily. That's what really we're all about here on the show. Thank you again. I'm truly honored to have you join me on your journey of change. I love you all. And I hope I see you all next week. Have a great one, everybody. Thanks. Thank you.